by Lucy. My name is Lucy. Welcome to my channel on YouTube and I'm coming on today to do a little bit of sewing with you, show you some gorgeous new fabric I've got recently and in, tell you a little bit about my social sewing community group on Facebook. So first of all, um, you may have seen some from some of my past YouTube videos. If you haven't, you must like them and subscribe, of course, to follow along and go check out my past videos. Those videos are live sessions, sewing sessions that I hold on my social sewing community group page on Facebook. Every week I try and drop in with my sewing enthusiasts there and share a little bit of live sewing. We've done loads of stuff. We've made um, some gorgeous fabric flowers, which I think you might be able to see. They're just over there behind me. Oh, if I can point, um, we've made loads of stuff, a pencil roll, a little, a little caddy to keep, a mug caddy to keep all our storage in, loads and loads of different things, it's fab. Um, so you can join us, I'll put the link in the comments here, so if you want to head over to Facebook and join that community, you can do indeed, and see what we're up to. Um, and one of the other things I do in that community group is every week I share my sewing A to Z, made by Lucy sewing A to Z. And on that A to Z, I just literally have something sewing related that begins with that letter of the alphabet. And we're currently on the letter H. And this week I'm talking about tailor's hams. So if you don't know what a tailor's ham is, it's basically like a little tight sort of um, cushion or pillow as such that helps you with your pressing of seams, your ironing. So if you're dressmaking, you might have some really awkward or curvy seams that you want to press open. You'd use your little tailor's ham to help you do that. And equally, if it's not dressmaking, um, a lot of the little projects I do are sort of homewares and things. You can use it for that as well. So if you need to iron down a corner of a boxed corner, for instance, on a bag, it would really help you do that as well. And they're great and easy little things to make at home and perfect to have in your sewing supplies. So I'm gonna make one with you today. But before I do that, I wanna show you this gorgeous fabric that I'm gonna use for my sewing tailor's ham um, that I got from, here it is, I got from, Oh, I can never, never pronounce this properly. Gerthingani, I think. There they are there, the lovely Lauren. That's her company. I'll put her company in the comments as well. I came across her on social media and this gorgeous fabric um, was up for grabs and I love it. Look how gorgeous it is. It's a lovely cotton canvas. So I use this fabric type of fabric all the time in my sewing in workshops that I hold. So we make all sorts of homewares like cushions and doorstops and bags and things. And this cotton canvas is lovely to sew for those types of homewares. And it's got all gorgeous little, you can see, sewing related sort of patchwork squares almost on there. So you've got pins and cottons and scissors. Gorgeous and lovely colours. I love all these colours. These are completely my colours, as you can see, yellows and pinks and turquoises and blues and things. So this is what I'm gonna to use to make my tailor's ham from. So your tailor's ham, I've got a little pattern which I'm also gonna share with you um, on here. I'm gonna link that in. Hopefully, fingers crossed, I work out how to do that. So I've drawn that out for you. Um, we've got a little front section, this is the top, and then just the back bit here is just a little curvy. I'm gonna cut on the fold. Um, and when you're choosing some fabric for your ham, really, really important, it's gonna take a lot of heat because obviously you're gonna be holding the iron on your seams potentially to, to iron them flat. So you need a fabric that's gonna withstand a lot of heat. So something like a calico, a canvas fabric that's um, that can with you know can hold a lot of heat and can take a lot of heat on it without burning or shrinking or anything like that. Um, a wool is also really good. You might find tailor's hams in shops and haberdasheries that are made from wool, like tweed on the top, and then you could put a calico on the underneath if you wanted to, that type of fabric. And then inside your tailor's ham, quite often they are filled with sawdust because it's, it withstands the heat and it's really compacted and hard. So you don't want your tailor's ham to be squidgy because you want to obviously be able to iron, you know, with, with a bit of force on there. So you want it to be really compacted and really tight in there. So I'm gonna use today all my off scrap, off, off cuts of felt. I've got loads, I don't know why I keep it all, but I do, I can't bear to throw anything away. Um, creative problems that, you know, that we all face when we're creatives. 
can't chuck anything away just in case. So I'm going to use all my um, felt scraps because they compound up really, really tightly. Um, and that's going to make my tailor's hand really compact and quite hard so that I can use it as my tailor's hand. So that's what I'm going to be using. So let's get started. First of all, you need to get your pattern piece. You can cut, you can print this off um, from a PDF that I have hopefully attached to this video. So you'll need two pieces printed off. This piece here, which is the top of your ham, and then the underneath bit is just this simple shape here you need to cut to print off. And then you need to com um, convert your pattern piece onto your pattern paper. So whatever you decide to use, you might have proper pattern paper, or you might have, I quite often use baking paper or tracing paper whatever you can get your hands on really and that's what you want to use so this one I've done already this is the top section and I've also then drawn in the darts because we want our hand to be nice and curved so it's got four darts one at each corner um, and it's got a, a little arrow here because we're going to cut it on the fold and then it's got your little double notches there and a little one notch just here which I don't think you can quite see actually very faint just there and that's to match up the bottom and the top so that they um, are equal and then the bottom bit really really simply hasn't got any darts in at all um, again it's just sort of a half oval shape and we're going to cut it on the fold again so it'll open up to be sort of an oval and that's not going to have any darts at all and that's the underneath of our ham so that's what you want to do next you want to trace your patterns out and you want to cut them out of your chosen fabric cut out you also want to label your pattern pieces as well so label where the fold is for instance um, how many you want to cut so we're going to cut this one on the fold and one on the fold of this one so mark your fold line as well and then when you come back in the future to reuse it if you store this away somewhere tidy you'll know what to follow next you want to get your fabric and cut these pattern pieces out of your fabric pieces So what I'm doing here is I'm folding my fabric in half because I want to cut my pattern piece on the fold and I'm just considering which way round I want my fabric to lie. Um, this is the underneath piece. So I'm just attaching this onto here. I need some pins, which my pin cushion is miles away. Got a couple there and then cut that out. don't need to um, cut a seam allowance on here that is included if you do decide to do and it's just going to make your ham slightly bigger so it's no real problem so that's the first that's the underneath there we go that's the underneath piece and I'm going to do the top so again on the fold You can also use your rotary cutter to cut this out if you find that easier. You know, what use whatever is works for you. is cut out of my chosen fabric so that's my top piece that's got sort of a, a curve
curved, two curved edges, and then that's my bottom piece. And they should be different sizes. The bottom's gonna be slightly smaller than the top piece, that's correct. Then what you need to do on your top piece is you need to mark in your darts. So what I've done on my piece is I've made a hole at the point of the dart um, shaping. So where, I, where my markings for my dart is, I've just made a hole in the top here and then I could transfer that hole onto my fabric so that it helped me draw these lines. And you also want to draw in your little um, notches here to help you line your pattern pieces up. So I'm going to fold my ham piece wrong, right side facing like so and then I'm going to lay my pattern piece on top of that to draw my darts in. So basically I'm just laying it on top, I'm going to mark through these little dots here and then I'm going to just pop my pencil underneath the edges one and two here onto the fabric and then use a ruler to line those up on my actual fabric piece. I'm just going to do that now. You want to do that on all corners. So on here, if I just show you what I've done there, I've just put a little mark through the hole at the dot and then I've just done two little lines which marry up with the two corners um, of my dart on my pattern piece and I've done the same for the other side. So I've got two little marks and my dot and I'm going to turn it over and do the same the other side and then I'm going to match those um, marks up using my ruler. So on the other side you just need to turn your pattern piece over mark all these little marks in place and then I'm going to fetch my ruler and I'm going to join those lines up. One ruler! So I'm starting at the dot, laying my ruler and my pencil on. I'm lining up with one of my markings for the top of my dart and the same inside. So I end up with this on my fabric. So there's the markings I've done at the top. There's my dot in the middle and I've just lined them up with my ruler. And this is on the reverse of my fabric. So I won't see this once this has been sewn together. Same with the other two on the other side. And I'm just using a, a standard pencil here. You can use your tailor's chalk, of course, but this will be on the inside, so you won't see it. So let me know in the comments if you um, use a, ta a tailor's ham at the moment for your sewing and what you use it for, what projects you make. So there's my four darts drawn in now for me. So to sew my dart, what I'm going to do is I want to fold that corner up where that dart is with the point here, so this pointy bit on the top. And then I want to line up this bit with the other side, so the two lines. I want to line them up either side, like so. And I'm gonna put a pin in there to hold that in place. And then what I'm gonna do is just sew down that line from the point there up to the top. And I'm gonna do that for every corner here. So I'm gonna pinch where the point is at the bottom, line the two top bits up, pop a pin in or iron it, whatever you want to do to hold it in place. And then I'm gonna sew down that so that drawn line there and that makes my dart so there's four of those to do so that's your next job to do I'm just going to move over to my sewing machine now which is set up here um, let me get some thread and then I'm going to sew those four darts up so I've just added a white thread now to my sewing machine I've just got it on a straight stitch I'm going to start with a back stitch at the start to lock the stitch in um, follow that drawn line all the way up and then back stitch when I get to the top of my dart. Taking my pins out as I go. And I'm going to do that with all four corners. And you'll see 
um, once you've done the fourth one, it starts to then sort of curve over and give you your shape for the top of your ham. Okay, go back over that stitch. There you are, that's it for. I'm just going to trim all my threads off now. Keep your work nice and tidy. So four darts have been put in now, so you can see it makes like a little bowl shape almost. That's how it um, turns it out. I've got all my pretty sewing related pictures on the top of this gorgeous fabric. And now what I want to do is attach this to my bottom piece of fabric. So for this, what I'm going to do is pin it all the way around. Um, I want to use those notches that I've drawn in on there to line up with the notches on the bottom. So let me just put those bottom notches on a moment. I'm just going to transfer them across. So I'm just going to draw my bottom notches on here as well, which are on this pattern piece, so that I know where I am. You can cut these little notches out if you want to, or I just draw them on normally underneath the pattern piece. So I've just drawn that onto my fabric and that will marry up with the notches from my um, top pattern piece, which I should definitely have drawn on before I sewed round. So top tip when you're following this along, make sure you draw your notches on. So here goes, you will have your notches on there. You need to marry your notches up. So the notches on the top piece to the notches on the bottom piece, and that's where you want to begin. And then you just want to pin all the way around and you want to leave yourself a gap, a good sort of two inch gap to then fill your tailor's hand even more really, because we're putting in quite a lot of stuffing. So you just want to gradually pin around your tailor's ham until it's all together. Um, and then we're gonna sew all the way around leaving that gap found my pins so don't forget if you want to follow me on YouTube you need to hit the subscribe button which is just below my video here um, and that will let you know when I've got new videos coming up and I'm going to be adding um, new sort of little mini tutorials um, how to's just little vlogs really of you know what I'm up to um, and some of my exciting sewing plans going forward. So you definitely want to be um, watching out for those and you need to subscribe to find out when that's all happening. And of course, if there's something you'd like to see me do on YouTube, because I'm quite new to YouTube, um, I'm a bit of a Facebook fan really, let me know in the comments as well. So I've now pinned the bottom to the top. So this is right sides facing. So all the right sides are inside of my ham. I'm going to sew all the way around the outside, leaving myself a good two, two and a half to three inch gap. Um, you know, as you start seeing that gap close up, you'll know how much you need to get your stuffing into, depending on what you're using. If you're using um, sawdust, you might, you could maybe get away with a slightly smaller gap, say two inches. Um, because you might be able to funnel it in, whereas I'm using felt, so I need to be able to sort of push that in, um, in big bundles. So now I'm going to sew all the way around the outside of this. Um, seam allowance wise, all I'm doing on this ham is leaving a one centimeter seam allowance. And to do that, just make sure your needle is central in your foot and just follow the edge of your foot and that will give you a one centimeter seam allowance. You don't want to leave your gap on a dart, so make sure your gap for filling is in the middle of two of your darts. So you don't want to be leaving your gap over one of these, make sure it's somewhere there in the middle. And I'm just laying my darts down to one side. You can cut them off if you want to. Cut them down to the seam and then iron them out nice and flat, but it won't have a massive impact on this type of project. It won't matter if you don't, basically. All the way round. Watching your fingers, the pins are sharp. So 
top tip, remember before you join it back up to stop. Such a common mistake is when we're leaving a gap to fill something with stuffing, for instance, and we just keep sewing and join the whole thing up and then we have to unpick it. So just remember when you're coming round to where you started to leave that gap in your fabric, you think, you're probably thinking, that's so obvious, but it happens such a lot. In my workshops, um, yeah, it's very frustrating for people when they have to unpick. There we are, so I've come back. So what you can do is put sort of two coloured pins where you start and finish so you remember or some fabric clips or something to remind you. So I'm just going to put my pins back. Did a little back stitch when I finished. I'm just going to snip off my threads. I'm just going to trim away some of this excess fabric from the edge of my ham. So don't worry if your top and bottom don't fit together perfectly, it's fine. Um, just give it a little trim around. There we go. So I have now sewn on my um, top bit to my bottom bit. I've just folded my um, darts down out of the way and I've left myself a good sort of two inch gap there, maybe a little bit more. So I'm gonna turn this now in the right way. If you're using sawdust to fill your tailor's ham, another little top tip, it's sometimes worth making a lining ham. So making your ham, but then making another ham slightly smaller, only very slightly, to go inside to line, to hold your sawdust. Because sawdust is a bit prickly at times. Um, and particularly if you're not using these lovely cotton canvas thick fabrics, you might want to just put a lining in there. So you could do that at this stage, put your lining in, um, you can even sew your lining into your main fabric, so put it all together before you sew all around it. And that would just give it extra bit of protection. So there we have it, this odd looking sort of shape. And you can also make a long ham as well for like sleeves and things. But for the little projects I do, little bags and stuff, this little mini one is perfect. So now I'm gonna stuff this with my fabric scraps. Let's get them all together and I'm just gonna fit as many as I can into here. So it's really compacted, really compounded um, and firm. So I just pop them all in. So as you can see, I'm a bit of a felt hoarder. Just got random pieces, just in case I need them, of course. But perfect for this. So let's just fill this with all my little bits and pieces. Go and you just want to fill it up as much as you can. Oops, so keep stuffing, it would be quite nice to make my stash a bit smaller. This is not my only felt stash, by the way. This is just my smaller off cuts. I've got a whole big bag of other felt off cuts. Uh, <laughs> that I seem to hoard as well. As well as all my fabric offcuts. There we are, so keep getting that all in as tight as you can do it. So you could use, you know, a chopstick to help you push all of this in if you wanted to, if you needed to. So keep going. Go. gingerbread men made out of this, Christmas stockings made out of the red, all sorts. I love flicking back through all my scraps because it reminds me of what I've made in the past. All these little bits and pieces. All the little fun projects you can get up to. So you just keep stuffing and stuffing and stuffing your ham.
it. That's really compacted now, really firm and nice. That's gonna really help me when ironing those curves and cuffs and seam lines and necklines um, and little bag bottoms, whatever it is that I need to get a little small area um, on a rounded shape. So that is my little tailor's ham. And my last job to do, once I'm fully happy that's compacted, is to fold up this opening here and hand stitch al along that opening to close it shut. And there you have it, your little tailor's ham. How cute is that? And that's gonna help you no end with your sewing projects going forward to get some really neat and professional finishes on your project. So if you wanna follow along, I'd love to hear how you got on. You'll find the pattern in the comments below and leave me a little comment and maybe a picture to show me your little tailor's ham when you're all finished. Lovely to see you and thank you so much for watching along. I hope you've enjoyed this little video and look out for my upcoming videos and of course why not join us on Lucy's Social Sewing Community on Facebook where you can see so much sewing and inspiration and catch me live sewing every week. I'd love to have you there. Thanks for watching and until next time happy sewing!